Hey guys, Pelican here. Welcome to my Nightblade solo PvP build for the Lost Deaths patch. This meta now is very tanky, but I've had a lot of success on this build. Uh, Nightblade has received a lot of buffs, especially uh, in damage due to the concealed weapon changes. And uh, the build I'm using now honestly has like the most damage out of any one VX builds I've played. And it's also like the tankiest uh, Nightblade build I've ever played so far because of all the healing changes. So these are the stats, uh, the max stats of my build, uh, without continuous, uh, just your standard, all your standard buffs that we have. And I'll be going through uh, my gear setup, CP and skills. Uh, timestamps are in the description, and uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. So first, I'll be going through my gear setup. This is the full build if you need to screenshot it. On my front bar, I'm running 5-piece Night Mother's Gaze. This is, uh, in my opinion, the best uh, damage set for Nightblade solo PvP. Uh, you don't really want to use Mark, especially now that it costs uh, Magicka to cast. Even before when it was free, I didn't use Mark because it just takes up so much. Uh, it takes up a bar space and it's very troublesome to apply every time you want to burst. So uh, without Major Breach, uh, Night Mother's Gaze is no doubt the best damage set. You will easily apply uh, before you start any combo because uh, your first hit will usually be a crit damage out of cloak, and even even if it's uh, even if you don't cloak, you have so much crit chance. So this will proc a lot. So I'll definitely run this for damage. And on my back bar, I'm running five piece rallying cry. This is no doubt the best, uh, most stat dense uh, set that a solo PvP -er, or even someone in a group can run. It gives you 300 uh, weapon and spell, it gives you 300 damage and 1.6k crit resist which is I believe 25% uh, crit resistance so especially on a roller blade this is um, very uh, effective because you are more vulnerable to like burst damage so crit resist will mitigate a lot of burst damage. Uh, I think this set is pretty much necessary for solo pvp now and the uptime is pretty good as well. Uh, if you play well, you will easily get an 80% uptime, sometimes even 90%. So yeah, try to keep this up as much as possible. Uh, try to force it to cast if you need to. And for my mythic, I'm running marking. I think this is no doubt still the one of the best mythics for uh, PvP. Gives you 200 damage and 2.3k resist. A uh, very strong balance of offense and defense for one piece. Definitely use uh, this mythic. And for my monster, I'm not running a full two piece. In fact, I'm running one Baron and one Magma. And the reason for this is uh, I really cannot find a two piece monster set that I like on Nightblade. You no longer need a Magma incarnate two piece because you really have minor courage and uh, minor resolve from your skills. And I tried Blood Spawn. Uh, Blood Spawn works as well, but the uptime is about 50% at best. Uh, and I don't really like it. Uh, Balrog is also a very good choice, but uh, personally don't really like, like it on Nightblade as well. So you can definitely use Blood Spawn or Balrog uh, if you want. Uh, Blood Spawn is especially good for casting more in caps, which is nice because... Uh, it's a lot harder to stun uh, without in cap now. Now that the concealed no longer stuns on demand, it just applies off balance. But yeah, and for my last piece, I'm running one piece trainee just for the HP. So moving on to my armor setup, uh, I'm running one heavy, two light, and four medium. And uh, the placement of the pieces are important. Make sure your heavy is on the chest and your light armors are on the hands and waist. Uh, I think you can drop one light for another medium if you want uh, because I feel like my max sustain is really more than enough and medium might give more damage uh, in some situations. For my traits, I'm running all well fitted. Uh, usually people would run a reinforced on the heavy chest piece but uh, I tried it and I feel like well fitted uh, is still better for me. Uh, I think I really have more than enough resist for a roller blade so I didn't go Reinforce, I would prefer uh, more sustain. And for my enchantments, I'm running all tri stat. For my jewelry, I'm all I'm running all spell damage glyphs, and uh, I have one swift as well. I feel like one swift uh, is the perfect amount of speed for me. 
And part of the reason we can run so much spell damage is because of our monster pieces. Uh, it provides all the regen that we need. Moving on to my weapons, on my front bar, I have a Nern X with Shock Enchantment. And on my off on my off hand, I have a Sharpen X with uh with Absorb Stem. So the reason I'm using X now is uh because I think I have more than enough pen with uh Night Mother's Gaze and usually I would run Maces but uh, I feel like this patch you really need to stack crit damage uh, to be able to kill people like everyone is so tanky now average HP is like 35k uh, in serial deal on my server so I think crit damage is really important and that's why I'm using Shadow as well uh, for the enchantments I'm running Shock on the main hand Shock will apply minor vulnerability, 5% more damage dealt. And on my other hand, I'm using a uh, Absorb Stem, which applies minor breach, about 3k pen. On my back bar, I'm using a Defending Bow and a, a Weapon Damage Enchantment. So that's all for the gear. Uh, I'm going to move on to my skills. So on my front bar, I'm running Camo Hunter, Concealed Weapon, Vigor. Uh, spectral Bow, Power Extraction, and Incap. Camel Hunter is my source of major savagery and it also gives 3% uh, weapon damage when slaughtered as well as a minor berserk when you flank an enemy. And this patch I've seen an increase in Night Blades probably because of all the Night Blade buffs. Uh, a lot of people are cloaking around so in many fights I find Camel Hunter really useful for dealing with them but it does cost a lot of stem so uh, please use it with caution. I've run out of stem a few times uh, using Camo Hunter. The next one is Concealed. This is our main spammable. Uh, it received a lot of like really strong buffs this patch. Uh, mainly the speed and damage buffs. So when whenever you leave Cloak on the front bar, or when your major expedition ends on the front bar, you gain 10% damage. Uh, basically major berserk. For five seconds this is a very very strong buff for the night blade playstyle because uh, most of my most of the time uh how i burst is uh, i would cloak and then i will just in cap and bow out of stealth and this will give 10 percent more damage to that combo which is very huge and also when you're when it's slaughtered you will gain 15 percent move speed uh this makes it very easy to uh a lot easier to stay on your enemy while attacking and you can also stack it with bow, with major expedition from bow, and you will be able to run extremely fast to get away from like tough situations. It no longer uh, stuns on demand, so if you're not using in cap, uh, you have to follow it, follow up with concealed, uh, with a medium heavy, so with a medium attack to stun. And uh, that's one downside of the changes this patch is a lot harder to <laughs> stun an enemy. Alright, next up is Resolving Vigor. This is uh, one of our main heals and our main heal over time. Uh, it received a very big buff this patch. Uh, not only does it give minor resolve now, so you pretty much have permanent minor resolve uptime. Uh, it heals for way more than life, I think. Uh, the two tip is now over 5 seconds, so it actually ticks. Uh, you get 6 healing ticks over 5 seconds. And near a keep fully buffed, I've had Vigor tick for over 5k uh, crits and my 2 tip can get easily over 35k with uh, just my own buffs, no continuous attack so Vigor is a very strong heal now it's part of the reason why I'm so tanky this patch and probably also why most people are so tanky so uh, it's a very nice buff, uh, perfect, for our, perfect for our build next up is Merciless Resolve, this is your main burst uh, it hits extremely hard like on this build I constantly get over 20k crits on people out of, uh, out of stealth gives you weapon damage as well when you stack uh, so I like to keep this up uh, when I'm not attacking for the extra healing and it also has a pretty nice heal when you land a bow especially if your bow hits really hard this can easily heal for like 10k sometimes so it can potentially save you in some situations where you are bursting someone and then you also get bursted yourself. And the last skill is Power Extraction. Uh, this is our most important buff. 
it gives you your major sorcery as well as your minor courage so a lot of weapon damage from this and it's part of the it's one of the reasons i like uh i chose to go dual wheel over two hand because the minor courage uh, in my opinion is more valuable than the extra healing from rally and because this patch is so tanky i really don't feel the need to have rally i think vigor and healthy offering is way more than enough heals and another thing about this skill is that it also hits like really hard i get like constant 5k plus crits on people sometimes even 8k on the really squishy ones and because of that it makes for a very good uh, execute normally after you burst someone with a night blade and their execute range uh, their natural instinct is just to roll and uh, if you can hit them with power extraction you usually get the kill I get a lot of like, uh, I finish off a lot of people with power extraction, and as a bonus, it also applies. Uh, it also reduces the damage of enemies that you hit. So, if you're fighting a lot of people, you could, I guess, try and debuff them a bit to relieve some pressure. But uh, it's not really the main selling point of the skill. The extra, the minor courage and the ability and the having an AOE. Uh, attack is what made me choose dual wheel and extraction over two hand and rally and for our ultimate we have in cap uh, this pretty much uh, your standard night blade out uh, I wouldn't use so tether this patch because I really think that you need the extra damage from in cap to kill all the tanky people this patch uh, not much explanation needed uh, usually how I use this is I just get 130 out uh, and I will just in-cap someone directly out of out of uh, invis so it's a guaranteed crit and then I will bow them that's uh, the standard night blade burst all right moving on to our back bar I'm running shadow image uh, cloak phantasma escape healthy offering siphoning attacks and temporal guard Shadow Image is probably the most important defensive skill for a solo Night Blade. Uh, good placement of your shade is very important in surviving in a 1vx. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much a mandatory skill if you are going for Night Blade solo PvP. It's going to be very hard to kite effectively without uh, this. Shadowy Disguise uh, doesn't need a lot of explanation. Uh, just use it wisely uh, try to what I like to do is try to sometimes gain some distance uh, before I use it so I don't get pulled out of it and uh, it's also a very important skill for your offense because you need the the guaranteed crit is very useful for bursting and not only that you also need your invis uh, to proc a concealed weapon effectively although you could use expedition to proc it but using invis is way more uh, reliable and it also procs your uh, vampire weapon damage passive as well so very important skill uh, these two skills in my opinion uh, need the most uh, practice to use uh, well in the outnumbered fight next up is phantasma escape this skill also uh, got a buff this patch and it's a reason why i'm using it instead of shuffle now even though i like the longer snare removal duration from shuffle so it gives a major evasion same as shuffle and it also uh, removes all the it removes snares from you but only for four seconds but uh, what i really like about this now is that it will reduce your dodge rule cost uh, every time you take damage and this can stack surprisingly fast uh, in a 1vx and it will relieve a lot of uh, stem sustain issues for you so i will definitely run this uh, over something like uh, race against time even though race against time got an even bigger buff than phantasma i still prefer phantasma for one vx uh, i think major evasion is very important for a rollerblade playstyle and the stem sustain is really valuable uh, for rollerblade as well but yeah you can also choose to run race against time if you wish to go more offense instead next up is healthy offering this is our main burst heal and this is in my opinion the strongest one of the strongest burst heals in the game i think it's even stronger than honor the dead 
uh, which is just ridiculous. It heals for so much, and uh, you don't even need to worry about the health drain. It's barely noticeable, if at all. And you also get minor mending uh, when you cast it. So it's really, really nice. You can also spam it, unlike Rally. So, I mean, I just don't see the point of having Rally if you already have a spammable Rally on your other bar. And lastly, is Siphoning Attacks. This will give us our sustain, and it's also a very good utility skill. Uh, gives you mech and health every time you recover, uh, every time you light attack. And the heal is particularly useful for proccing your Rallying Cry on the back bar, since it can crit. So uh, make sure to always light attack uh, as much as possible, unless you're going for a burst, in which case you, want to, you don't want your light attack to take up the crit from cook so yeah with this skill uh you will relieve a lot of uh max sustain issues so can run even more damage as a result and finally for my back bar out i have temporal guard uh this is usually what i run the back bar very standard gives you minor protection when slaughtered uh gives you a nice little damage shield when you block can make the difference sometimes and uh, the skill itself is quite buggy still, it still bugs out a lot, sometimes it even makes your game crash But uh, I don't use it a lot, uh, only in really desperate situations I use it It's mainly just there for the uh, passive Alright, so that's all for the skills uh, Lastly, I'll be moving on to all the other stuff, uh, my Mundus attributes, consumables Well, not lastly, uh, I still have CP, my bad so for my attributes, uh, this is really up to you in my opinion. I messed around with it and the values I use now are what I think works best for me. So I aimed for 29k HP on my front bar, 18.5k stem and the rest I just put into Magicka. Now you can alter this according to your to your needs. Uh, if you feel like you don't need as much stem, you can just drop some of the stem points. Personally, I find 18.5k to be the perfect uh, amount. And you can also adjust your HP accordingly, uh, more or less is fine. And you don't really, don't really worry about, uh, you don't need to worry too much about losing Magicka and damage. Uh, Magicka makes up a very small portion of your damage, it's not going to affect it much. So just uh, give yourself the freedom to adjust uh, however you like. For my Mundus, I have the Shadow, it increases your crit damage and healing. Uh, again, very, in my opinion, is the best Mundus for this build. As I said before, you need crit damage to kill this patch. So, uh, with Shadow and all our other crit damage sources, we have about 99% uh, crit damage overall. And for my food, I'm running the Smoked Bear Haunch. This is no doubt the best food uh, right now for most solo PvP builds. It pretty much solves all your sustain issues, uh, gives you stem and mech recovery. Don't really need any uh, mech stat from your food besides HP. Mech stat isn't really that effective anymore compared to just stacking damage. And of course, I'm also a vamp stage 3. And for my race, I'm a dark elf. Uh, dark elf might seem a bit odd for a night blade at first, but uh, for a hybrid night blade like this, uh, I do believe it is the best option. The max and the max max and stem passive is extremely useful because, as you can see, I do need both. Uh, I'm stacking max max for damage because of the the siphoning passive. So stacking max magicka is more effective than stem for damage uh, on night blade. But uh, I'll still need I still need a uh, max stem. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's very. I find it very hard to sustain a uh, stem with a low stem pool. That's why I chose to go Dark Elf. Uh, gives you both. The flame resist is very nice uh, because we are a vamp. We naturally recur to fire, and most of the spell damage uh, you take are from fire. There's a lot of mag decays around. So, really, really nice uh, resist passive. Better than the Wood Elf one, in my opinion. And lastly, we also have the we also have additional spell damage from the last passive. And for my potions, I'm running your uh, standard your standard tripods. Uh, not nothing special here. 
since we are hybrid, a uh, hybrid uh, night blade, uh, we do need a lot of mag and stem sustain. So that's why I chose to run uh, tri stat pots. So I think that's all for my yeah. That's all for all my gear setup. And lastly, I'll be moving on to my CP. So for my blue CP, uh, for my slotted, I have focus mending. Focus mending is, in my opinion, the best defensive CP overall for Nightblade because pretty much all your heals are single target. So since your healing is already so strong, uh, having 10%, having an additional 10% multiplier is going to make them like ridiculously OP. And again, you don't really need uh, as much uh, mitigation with Rallying Cry. So uh, this is no doubt the best uh, defensive CP. And I think no matter what, you should have it on the Nightblade. For my next skill, I have Dualist Rebuff. Uh, the reason I chose this over Ironclad is because uh, I don't really think I need more mitigation against AoE Directs uh, since I already have Major Evasion. And also the medium uh, dodge roll passive helps as well so i chose to go dualist rebuff to help uh, relieve some damage over time pressure uh, this isn't really necessary to survive like you can even one vx with four damage cps this patch but uh, i personally like dualist rebuff but you can always swap it out for deadly aim if you want for more damage and for my next uh, Ability I've Master at Arms. The reason I chose Master at Arms over Deadly Aim is because power extraction is AoE and I want that buffed as well. Uh, even though Deadly Aim will help with uh, some damage over time from your status, Master at Arms is better choice overall for what we're running. And lastly, we have Fighting Finesse. This is a hybrid CP. Gives you healing as well as crit damage. Gain crit damage is very important, so no doubt this is one of the skills you should. This is one of the CPs that you should run. For my red CP, I have Pain's Refuge. This is no doubt the best uh, CP overall for solo PvP, especially since we have no way of removing effects. This gives you a lot of mitigation when you're outnumbered, so this is a definite must have. Uh, my next CP is Relentlessness. I like this a lot for the rollerblade playstyle. On a rollerblade, you are very vulnerable when you are CC'd. So this really helps uh, by giving you major protection the instant you are CC'd. You don't even need to break free from the passive for this to proc. You will proc the instant that you are stunned. If you want a, a more balanced CP, I guess you could run Juggernaut. Basically works the same way. but gives you half the resistance over more than double the time so uh, you can use this as well if you want to relieve pressure over a longer time instead of a shorter time next up is survival instincts i think this is a very important cp especially since our stem pool isn't that high uh, you need uh, you definitely need the cost reduction here so very very op cp for sustain and finally we have Sustained by suffering. This is pretty standard CP as well. Just gives you uh, your regen and you'll pretty much be up all the time. Same as survival instincts. Like this, this, these two CPs in a 1VX will have a virtual 100% uptime. And that's all for the CP and that's all for the build. So that's all for the video. I hope you guys enjoy the build. Granted, this patch is very tanky, but you will only get better on September 5th after Mara's Bum nerf. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.